Hi, welcome to ODE YouTube channel. I'm Paul, as you know, and today I'm not in my regular setup. I'm on my living room, on the floor, with different lighting, just to show you a different video. Recently, a subscriber of my channel asked me, why don't you show you as how you organize your collection? I have to say that I just found out that I don't really organize my collection. But I think it was it is fair enough to show my stuff and maybe start from here to uh, re reducing the collection and to organizing it better. Also, recently I saw a video of Waski Squirrel and I really enjoy his videos. I think we have in some particular points about fountain pens, we have this a similar way of thinking about the pens don't all need to have very special branding. They must, they can be just simple, regular, sometimes vintage pens that nobody cares about. And why can't we try to put them back to life? And sometimes we find out amazing stuff. So I, I follow his channel. And recently he bought some wooden drawers to uh, organize his collection and he made a quick tour of, of his collection and so I thought about doing the same kind of thing but I don't I didn't buy anything new to to store my collection I just I was just thinking okay this is a way of showing how I put things showing a bit of my collection and then to try to 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 improve from here because definitely there is a lot to be improved so let's start by the beginning when i got into fountain pens i decided to do one thing i already had a, a little place to store some of pens but when i started collecting seriously or more seriously i thought that these kind of organizers would be the ideal ones these organizers, you see it like that, it, they, are make of fa they are made of fake leather and they take, I guess, uh, for, they take a lot of pens, I don't remember, I think it's 48 pens each one, I think it's 12, 12 and 48 in total, and I bought 7 of those, because at that time I thought it would be interesting to have my collection all in the same kind of place without wasting too much space. So let me show you what I have in the first one and I'll try to go through these quite quickly. The first one is not about fountain pens. It is about, I would say, everything from um, pencils. I have quite a few I have lots of Parker, as you see, and there some more, and also felt tip pens. I think I will shut down this light. Maybe it's better like this. And I have many kinds of uh, pencils, pencils, ballpoints, felt tips, anything almost. So. I have one just for this kind of stuff because some pens I get in sets and they come with all other accessories. So this is the first case, not fountain pens. But the second is about fountain pens and here I start something that I start to show you something that I, I would say I'm known buy is to have many Caveco pens, mainly the Caveco Sport. And you can see here, these are the, since the current uh, management took, took care of, uh, of Caveco brand, I started to collect these, uh, the pens from this current management. They are different, they are cartridge converters, they have this kind of design. So here we have some prototypes, some very rare and older stuff. On the 
bottom row I have the Taveco Art Sport, the from Generation 1 and Generation 2. In the second side we have the Generation Art, uh, the Art Sport Generation 3. I have only two of them here. The empty slot is because one of those is being currently used. This one is the Look Sport. Then we have the Skyline, some special edition, the Ice Sport, more Skyline here on the bottom. And another case with more Skyline Sport, the other case with more Skyline and then the Classic Sport. These are just some trim variations if you want, check my videos on the Caveco Sport pens because I explain all that. More Caveco Classic Sport, here the new collection of the, Skyline, the Frosted Sport. I have some one at least in use, so it's not here also. And then we go to the end of this uh, case with the Aluminum Sports or the AL Sport. In another pouch like this we have the also again the Caveco AL Sport. Here we have the more AL Sport. I have one there because it's in use. The AC Sport, which has carbon fiber there. The Brass Sport, the Steel Sport. And in the other side, oops, I have a um, highlighter one. This is a special one. Not a special, but it, is, it was uh, a pen that was made of uh, mixed parts by the owner of Caveco, for me. These ones are the vintage Caveco, sport, uh, not sports, these are other um, models. These are Caveco sports, these are not, these are the Elite, etc. Then on the bottom we have some Cavecos from the 60s and 70s, then the uh, current ones and also Caveco Lily put there. And this is all for my Caveco Sports. Okay, not that bad. Three of these organizers just for Caveco Sports. Then I'll go to a brand that I have lots of pens. And this brand is Parker. And about Parker, there was a time where I, or when, I started collecting all the different variations of the Parker 45. It is a model that I really like, and I started doing that. And that is what is inside this case and the next one. So, these are different models of the Parker 45. The first ones, the shorter ones, are not Parker 45s, actually. They are Parker Slim Folds, but with a design that is the same as the design of a Parker 45, just they have a, a screw cap. Then these Parker 45s, the first ones that I show here, have plastic caps. The, on the bottom you have some made of aluminum. This is the... Uh, these are called the... Oops, I forgot the name. The, this is another series. I will, f uh, I will remember it. Then uh, this is the TX, a very rare one, blue. Then we have the flighter that are made of steel. We have some golden ones. <coughs> Sorry. We have some ladies versions like these that have no clip. And I'll show it to you when it's here. The other is there. Also no clip. This one with a white section, but it's the only one I, I have with a white section. Oh, I remember. These with this finish and a wider band there, they are called the Coronet. It was a, a specific collection of Parker uh, 45. Then I have three different, uh, Cav uh, sorry, I was thinking about Caveco, uh, three different uh, Parker 45 desk pens and then lots of different colors, some with just slight variations. And after that, we'll go to the second case that has also Parker P45. 
pens. And this is also the Parker 45 collection. I have here, the, these are the most modern ones. These, these, sorry, these four were the last that were made. Then I have some new old stock barrels and sections to complete someday. And then here I have the some other, sorry, let me change my position, some other uh, pens. These are ever sharp pens. These are the precessors, predecessor, precessors of uh, part 45. These are two made by Ariel Clock. This is not a crest one, but it looks like. It is, um, these are some copies that were made. This is also another copy from, from India. We have many inspired by pens, also some Chinese, and some duplicates of my collection there also on the end. So lots of Parker 45 and lookalikes. And then the I think I will leave the last case of those more towards the end and I will show you now how I started when I had those cases full I started buying some wooden cases like this these cases were um, made specifically for some collection of pens that came in newspaper uh, sales point where you could buy a pen each day and then they, it was it was a collection of 50 so this takes 50 pens and you could just buy i think the first five and they were quite inexpensive and then after having the fi first five you could pay around 15 euros to get one of these so this is quite good. Sometimes they uh, appear on the flea market and I have three of them because I think they are quite nice to store some pens. So let's see what we have here. The first one also Parker pens. We have a Parker DQ which is Dufold quality, an interesting pen. And the Parker Dufold, the vintage one, the uh, junior size, the very unusual Parker T1 made of titanium and with an integral integral nib the 2002 replica or homage to the Parker 51 by, made by Parker a very a limited collection but the cap is made of silver so it tarnished a little but the pen is still unused then I have several Parker International the folds Centennial the folds these are the older version than an intermediate version with the check pattern the green which is olive and the yellow that is called uh, citrine check then a white one the big red and the black one there are spots empty here because some pens are in use for example I don't have here my replica of the Parker the fold made by Chris Thompson in copper that I showed you lots of time. And here we have a collection of Parker 75, these five. I don't collect, I don't really collect them, but sometimes I get, I get a few of them. For example, this one cost me seven euros, so I just bought it. I didn't clean it yet. It's just there. So this is another sign that I need to really organize my collection. Then we jump a little bit in time and we have pens from the 90s and the 2000s. Some plastic pens, the very good Parker 100. Here the more modern Parker Premier, which is a beautiful pen with a beautiful nib. This nib, by the way, is the same nib as a specific Waterman nib that I have around. And let's go to the third of these box of these drawers. And here I have another, some other vintage Parker pens. So they are all mixed up as you may see. 
because I have here a challenger, three challengers, then Lady Do Folds, Vacuumatic, Vacuumatic, Parker 51, some Parker 65, and let's move on to another of these boxes. And here I have another one. This one has always also some Parker pens, like you see there, the Parker 65, three Parker 65s. I have to sell some of those. I'm not that much into burgundy pens, so I think I'll, some of those will leave my collection. I need to really trim down my collection. But just to see the kind of disorganization that I have, I've showed you some cases with Parker pens. One of these drawer things with Parker. Now I have just two Parkers or three Parkers there and then we go to other brands. And this is a little bit crazy. And just let me go to another side just for a while and then I will come back to that. I have here, let me just put this a little bit on the side and I'll go back to that one. I have here another Parker uh, little thing, little case. It has the, the slots on the top and then it has more slots in a little drawer. I bought these at a store that was at a a stationery store that was selling it. I think they used it for their own, for exhibiting their pens in the store. And so I bought it. I don't know if this is an original Parker stuff or it's just marked Parker. I don't really know, but I found it was nice and bought it. So here we have Parker do folds from the from England. This is the the, the lady, the slim fold, the the regular fold, the senior, the massima. So I don't really know all the names of the pens by heart because they are all mixed up. Some more jotter, sonnet, sprit. On the lower drawer we have lots of Parker 25s. Some Parker Rialto, Parker 105, another sonnet that should be next to the other one, and all this stuff out of place. So, I showed you this one. So, what can we do? Can we move on to the, to the, to the drawers that we were seeing before? No, we cannot, because this is not all the Parkers I have. And this is a way you can see I'm not organized. These are little pouches that I bought in some art stores. They have these four markers, so they, they are very cheap. And I bought this. So here we have some older pens, some Parker Vacuumatics, some Parker Dufolds. They are not even in chronological order. A Parker Victory, which is something interesting. Then Parker Vacuumatics, many of those are for restoration. I just had to add this flap to protect the pen. There we have some more Parker Vacuumatics or two folds. These ones, this one is beautiful, but I need to restore the sec. It's, it's not fully screwed in place. It's a very, very beautiful pen with a two-tone nib, very beautiful, and double jewel. I have also these that I am going to sell someday. Beautiful finishes, these striped do folds. Then I have some more stuff here, and these are, these are mostly, mostly Parker 21s. A model that I don't really like that much, but sometimes I see some cheap and I buy them. So I think I'm not a collector, I'm just a hoarder. That's what I think and my family says. 
then another pouch and here some more Parker you see some empty slots makes no sense and on the two bottom parts we have Parker 51 some have problems with the ring the clips so to not uh, scratch the caps I put these to protect them so okay they are here and when you think this is all over it's not I still have one more of these cases this one has the Parker Frontier collection that I completely completed very recently there's one missing because it's in use now and on the bottom we have mixed pants Parker Jotters more Parker 25s some Parker Falcon which is another model with an integral nib like this interesting one not as nice as the T1 that is made of titanium let's put this aside also and now we have all the Parkers no we don't I have two extra cases that are quite nice and here they are I think I showed them once they are made of wood and this one is for the Parker 41, uh, 51 sorry, with also an engraving there and they have several Parker 51s the one that was for my grandfather this one that is a, a Parker 51 special but with a Kulok, a real Kulok uh, cap for a black plastic cap and this one is also from a real Kulok it is a yellow version of this very nice pen and with a yellow jewel on top so this is not a regular uh, production it is a replica and here and believe me this is the final case with Parker we have here the Parker the full two juniors and four uh, senior the fold from the 1920s and now that all the parkers are done let's go back to this case and in this case I showed you we have three parkers some cross three cross pens some schiffer this one has a very interesting finish with this shining like this very very interesting I think this is the Schiffer Agio then I have several models even to this Schiffer Intrigue there is some I have one in use that is not here but I don't have an empty slot for, for it so it's real it's really all messed up here more Schiffer pens. This one is very, very slim. It is almost as slim as the cross sentry on the other on the other drawer. Then we have Waterman's. This is a Waterman. All these. This is the Waterman Culture. A very nice pen that has, but in still the same nib in terms of shape. Not exactly the same design, but it has the same nib as the Parker Premier that I showed you before. This is the Waterman Karen, which is a very nice pen. I really enjoy this pen. I have three of those. The Waterman Exception, the big one with a square shape, and two Conklins. And so we finish all the, let's call it American, or call them American brands, even though they are not anymore totally American because Parker is in Europe and Waterman is in Europe, but these are the the American brands. Then we have here the Mont Blanc. This is Mont Blanc 149, a Montrose. Uh, I don't remember which is the name of this one. That is the, the Carrera. And in the next one, I have the Japanese pens and the B Pilot Bamboo, the Pilot Capless, Lucina the Kakuno, 
the elite, I have another elite that is in use, and some other uh, pilot pens. And because I have them all over the place, there are some three more here in this case. Then we have these pen which is a navy fleet, a Japanese pen that I think started the kind of design, new design for the Waterman Karen. Then we have Sailors, this is a 1911 large, very beautiful and nice pen to use. I love it, with a beautiful 21k nib. And we are done with this little wooden drawers. But we have still one more. And this one has the Lamis, and I have lots of them. There is an empty slot there because one is in use. In this one there are many more Lamy also, some more vintage ones and it is missing here the Lamy 2000 steel because it is on loan for to someone else to try it. Here I have some rotring pens, some older ones, which are interesting. Sometimes I find that them in flea markets, in used stuff store and I buy it. The Newton, nice rotring pen, rotring pens and beneath we have more rotring pens. These very beautiful rotring initial my mother gave me some years ago. It is a beautiful pen, at least for me. I really like it. And here we have some more, some yellow pens. I really enjoy yellow pens and we jump we are in the, in the German pens, we jump from Rotring to uh, Pelican and we have some vintage there, you know, some more modern there, the, the very well-known Stormtrooper, the M200, there's a, an M800 missing there, an 805, some are in use, these are Pelican also, I think this is Pelican Future, so it has a different kind of feel it is for kids and the Schneider there on the end also a German brand and so we are done with the the wooden cases but I have to say that for example I have these two big rotting pens that are also uh, German and they don't fit in any of those uh, cases because they with the clip and cap shape, they are too high. And then I have lots of other stuff. I have another of these cases with some pens. My Italian pens, Montegrappa, Aurora, Visconti, the Homo sapiens is in use. The mini Filcao and the very large Marlin Aureus that has the warped barrel. On the middle we have Benu, the first three. Then we have some inox chrome pens that look almost like Parker 45s. This one has this nib, which seems more a Parker 21. And this one has that one that looks like the nib of a pilot. So interesting. Uh, inox chrome pens from Spain. Also, this is a Super T Olympia from Spain. Interesting design. Then we have some pens from France. This is the Steep Pen Up, which is the pen that has the retractable nib. Then we have some Platinum pens from the UK. We have a German pen which is the, it's there, Herbert, 
Herbert Faber, Oriental. Uh, it's an interesting cheap piston filler pen. Then we have some, and here is the department of Mr. Waski Squirrel, the German pens, a Kea, a Diplomat, I have Diplomat somewhere else. And here it looks like a park a vacuumatic, but it's not, it's a German pen, a Lux pen. This is Senator, Senator, the Senator President here, some Euro pen, Aero pens, and here it is a Faber Castell that I got in the flea market. It is unused still. I will use it someday. And this is one of those mixed stuff uh, cases. But I have some others. I have this. This was a cigar case that I got and reused it. I have some pens from some people in the family. This is an interesting pen, a Universal. This is a Conklin Endura. No, Conklin Nozak. One of those was from my great grandfather which was this one, that is totally destroyed in many ways, except for the nib, that is in good shape. And I got once at a store that sells things in second hand, this other pen. It is a, the same, the same uh, Conklin Nozak, which is all okay, except it doesn't have the good nib or the original nib. This is something that is a restoration project. I have to, it's a, a Nedakoto from France. I need to see what I can do with this. Then we have some German pens. This is something very interesting. This pen, I, I find it very beautiful material of this pen, bought in the flea market. Then we have some more pens, some of those cheap and expensive pens that come with those little drawers that I showed you. Then a mini pen, I don't know which brand it is. It's interesting, a lever filler. I need to buy a bar for it because the bar is broken inside. And we have the cow that I showed you once before. And I told you this was going to be a long video. You were warned of that. I also have some pens there that are in case instead of being in the proper place. Some Faber-Castell and two Graf von Faber-Castell. Very beautiful pens. Very good writing experiences. Here in this little case of pencils that I adapted for fountain pens, I have two Stipen pens from when I was young. This was my first fountain pen and this was like a school pen that I used later that I broke the clip. And these are my Felisa, which are Portuguese branded pens. And just for the final case, we go back to one of those black cases. And here I have mix of everything. Some of them, some of those are really junk. Some are the, those T-Pen school pens, um, American pen there, the, that orange one. This is a reform from Germany. These are German pens that I got at the market. For example, this is a Waterman. What is it doing there? Some pens that are from merchandising products. These are some Japanese, older Japanese pens that are like a copy of Schiffer. You see, very interesting. I need to um, put them back to life. They need to be restored. And some more pens, some more stuff. Another copy or inspiration of a Parker Vacuumatic with stripes. And some nicer pens, another copy of a Parker pen with arrow clip, but very small, like a Parker 51, but in a small. So, this is what I have I have to show you today. How do I keep my pens? Everywhere. Ah, and 
These are just the pens that are in cases. I have boxes with pens around. Mostly my Chinese pens, the pens that I'm in use today, and uh, there are pe pe boxes with pens and parts for some restoration projects. So lots and lots and lots of pens. This is just a part of it. This is the part that is kept in, let's call it, good condition. The other part is all around. I have to take care of that also. So, I warned you it would be a very long video. I hope it was at least interesting and I hope you come back for more videos. You don't get frightened by this very long video. And please uh, ask me what you want. Uh, we can see if, I, if you see any pen that you want to know something more about or to, to me to go more in depth. Please tell me because I will need to, to do something about this. If you have ideas for storage, for cleaning this up, if you have some ideas for starting selling some pens to reduce the collection, please let me know. And I, I'm interested in hearing your opinions. So, this is all for today, and I hope to see you tomorrow. Bye, and stay safe.